All right, welcome back to another edition of Less Kevin, More Tech, utechit.com. This is really uh, less, less, less Kevin, because you're stuck with myself and uh, Joe Green today. But we are... Uh, stuck? Is that, we're, is that where we're going with this? Well, well... I'm going to say blessed. Blessed. Yeah, we're yeah. blessed with Joe Green. Thank you. Really blessed with having um, Todd. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, you work with Work Skills Corporation, and you're the training... Services, Services supervisor. supervisor. So yeah. tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about that and uh, your background, how you found Work Skills, because they're a wonderful partner of ours at uh, UTech. Yeah. Um, so I started in mental health. I got my degree at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Um, I did at home case management uh, for a period of time, which was interesting, um, but dangerous <laughs> at times. Um, but I, I really appreciated that aspect of it, and so. As things kind of progressed, I applied at um, Western Psychiatric Institute and Clinic, which is with University of Pittsburgh. Um, moved out to Massachusetts for a while. I did protective services, so uh, children and family and then elder protective services. It uh, had been a lot. It, it was a very intense job. Um, but then there was a period of time where um, both my grandparents fell ill pretty quickly. So we moved out to Michigan to kind of help with that and just ended up staying. So I'm in the South Lion area, um, and I've been working in Brighton. Uh, my mother actually worked for Work Skills about oh. 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and if I'm being honest, I signed up as a part timer. It was going to be short term, and I've been there for five years. So I, I really appreciate the mission. It's nice to go to work, and they're excited to see Mr. Todd. It's not a bad thing that I'm there. Um, which has got to be so different from when you're doing the child protective services. I mean, that had been so stressful. Oh, you know, even even doing the case management for mental health, we're dealing with really severe mental health, um, trying to balance budgets and, you know, going through mortgage lending with someone who's having a hard time just balancing their own life. So, And you're probably a young kid at this time, right? Oh, I was 22, you know. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, Telling I, a 40-year-old how to balance her checkbook uh you know not just a 40 year old uh, an alcoholic schizophrenic 40 year old who's violent and seeing things and um one of the most interesting guys i ever met in my life and introduced me to frank zappa we listened to a lot of frank zappa records Dynamo hum. yeah um but uh it was a different experience seeing people who are happy to see me every day. Uh, not that I didn't build amazing relationships, especially as a therapist at Western Psych. Um, but a lot of those folks didn't want to be there. I, I was not the person they wanted to see at breakfast, you know. Um, but every day people show up super excited to be there. And uh, it's, it's folks that maybe wouldn't have an opportunity to work competitively, um, but still have something to contribute. And they get out of work exactly what we get out of it. They get companionship. Uh, they feel like they're contributing. They're bringing home a check. Um, so it's it's great. That's awesome. So you're not working with children. You're on the adult side. Yeah, no longer. I've got four kids of my own. I, <laughs> I work with them at home, and then I, gotcha. I work with adults. So to, to backtrack a little bit, I think Joe and I could – could explain what work skills does, but I think you're going to be able to do a lot better job. So why don't you give a little background of work skills? Uh, work skills has been in the community for decades, hundreds of clients putting together parts, uh, working in the community in all different locations. Um, it's really inspiring. We do everything from skill building, which is just working on skills like communication and teamwork, um, all the way up to placing people in six figure jobs. Wow. Yeah, but that production with the packaging, and I read about how they do batteries, how they do picture frames. Sure. Um, the instructions. It's yeah, amazing. It, it's real work. It's not make work. So we, uh, we've got a Unistrut clamp job. So the Unistrut system is what's in the ceilings of almost every warehouse or shopping center that you've been in. Um, it allows for, like, ducting and stuff to be, you know, put up there safely. And so they're putting together those clamps every day from – 
sizes about that big to pieces this big. Um, they're doing labels and packaging for Volkswagen for their batteries for key fobs. Um, for a while, we were greasing transmission switches. We do uh, putting gaskets on bleeder valves for gas tanks. Um, so it's, like I said, it's, it's real work. Um, we are out there in the community making connections and, and trying to find things that our folks can do. Yeah, I've done the tour and it's, it's amazing to see the group together because some of them might be taking a little break, walking around, and, but they're all getting the job done. That's what the most important thing is. Yeah, I would definitely encourage if, if people are local in the Brighton area to, uh, to go on a tour. It's, it's really eye-opening. It's incredible. Absolutely. And it's my favorite thing about the tour is we, we provide something called a blended work environment. Um, so you've got folks uh, who are working at like 4% of a competitive pace putting together a handful of parts a day. And then you've got folks that are working at 125% of a competitive pace. Uh, they're working next to people who just need a job, whether it's because they were a stay-at-home mom for 15 years and they don't have that kind of, uh, like a reference or background, um, or they're coming out of retirement, they've decided they want to do something, they're trying to change jobs, um, whatever it is. So it's, it's really cool to see people make connections they wouldn't have. So not only your operations there at work skills, but do you also then place folks with jobs outside of work skills as, as, as well, correct? Absolutely. So uh, I supervise our job mentors, um, a really fantastic group of people. Uh, I've got, you know, college and master's students. I've got retired lawyers and uh, special educators and um, bartenders and, and anybody who's ever worked. If you are successful at work, you can be a job mentor. Um, so just a shout out, check out our website. We're hiring. Uh, but a anybody can be a job mentor. Um, and you're working directly with an individual that has some kind of barrier. Um, and maybe we're doing an assessment to see how successful you'd be in the community, or maybe we've hooked you up somewhere and we'd like to help you go through the entire process of orientation and training. Um, and maybe you need long term. We've had folks that are using our services for six years, 11 years because of their impulsivity or, um, difficulty communicating. So you work with the mentors to help them learn how to communicate and work with folks with, with the barriers. Is that right? Absolutely. And, um, you know, we have to connect with funding sources, community mental health, uh, MRS. Um, we're working with schools to work with their vocational and transitional programs for people like, you know, kids becoming people coming into the world. Um, we, uh, you know, there's of course case management and and we have to write a report. And, um, but yeah, we're constantly working on creating new connections in our communities so we can find people jobs. Um, if I can say, uh, we come from something called a strengths-based perspective. So we look at people and say, what can you do? Not what can't you do? So if I, Excellent. If I present an employee to you and I say, okay, I have somebody I'd like you to hire. He's nonverbal. He fatigues easily. He's going to need like a two hour shift. Um, he does not drive. He can't take public transportation. Um, he's also very sensitive to sound. He's going to need headphones or, or noise canceling of some sort. That person's really hard to find a job for. Um, but if I tell you that I have a guy who is nonverbal, but communicates either nonverbally or uses like a touch Pad. Tablet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, his mom is super active and will take him anywhere he needs to go. He's highly trainable. If you teach him something once, he'll do it 100% of the time. He's super focused on detail and quality. He's like kind and a pleasure to be around. Like that person I can probably find a job for. And it makes sense. I, it's just how you spin it, right? Exactly. And You're so, looking at the positives, what, they, what their strengths are. Absolutely. And not so, what's holding them back. What we like to do is find organizations that are willing to make reasonable accommodations. And so we find, we found him a job with a pet store. So he went to three different yeah. locations. Uh, he sorted the dog bins. There was a study that said that, that you can buy dog, you know, dog treats by the pound, but no one will buy them if they're broken. I promise you, your dog doesn't care, but <laughs> you know, we do. So there's all these broken dog treats in these bins and he would go in and quietly with a pair of headphones go in and sort everything out and they'd bag everything up and his mom would take him to the animal shelter and they would 
donate the treats to the animal shelter. That's awesome. So the um, uh, we're, we're not asking for handouts or favors. The employer got an employee who knew what the job was, who completed it perfectly 100% of the time, and uh, didn't have to take somebody else off of stocking or working on a cash, you know, a cash register. And then they also got a tax write-off for donating the, the still good dog treats to the animal shelter. So, so it's all true, added true, value. That's a true that's wonderful win. story. Yeah. yeah. And that probably time frame with the two hours, that's probably all, all you need, you know, yep. a couple times a week to do. He had three locations, and so he just hit each location once a week, and, and that was his job. That's fantastic. You know? And that's where the parents' involvement is so important. Absolutely. That they're willing to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, there are resources in the community, and, you know, we always love to talk about what those are and, and how we can connect people with them. But, of course, having a support team around you is invaluable. And then you guys also have a couple of houses, don't you? We do. So Work Skills has a, a lot of different divisions. So we're working with people there and in the community. Um, we've got a couple different houses. So we're doing residential services. We also provide in-home health care. Um, we have an apartment program. So our, our homes are, are staffed at all times. It's kind of like a group home situation. Um, but you can 24 seven, 24 seven. So you can graduate to our apartment program where maybe you have a, just one roommate, maybe you're alone and there's a staff apartment in the area so that they can come in, do meds, things like that. And then eventually you're getting to a point where you're living independently. So that's, that's our big goal is to optimize potential and to assist people in gaining independence. Right. And um, all your programs is what every single one, the job mentor, they're not going to make you the greatest bagger that's ever bagged groceries at Kroger or the best dog treat sorter in the world. But if you know who to ask questions to, if you know where to go, if you have an issue, then you can be an effective employee. Yeah. And then the artisan corner where that's another great story. Christine, I think you had um, purchased something. For that's them an recently. awesome. Just a couple of weeks ago, I brought some uh, acai bracelets mm-hmm. that were made and I don't remember where we were at, but uh, Julie was there set up with everything. Oh, we were at uh, Grayson Port is their, the hub uh, open house. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, so, so these bracelets are, are the skins from the acai berries in the, um, in the Amazon yep. rainforest. And they, what's left of these beads, these women, or what's left of the berries, these women make beads. And then you guys buy thousands of these beads and this money then goes back to the women who buy eggs and seeds, vegetable seeds, and they plant vegetables. And then with with the eggs, they sell them. And they were able to, this is a really cool story, they were able to build a church and a school from that money from work skills. Yeah, we've... And then the bracelets, when I got them, sorry, when the bracelets, when I got them, it came with a card. And my three bracelets were made from three different people and on the little, it's like a business card, but it was the the background of the three folks at Work Skills who made my three bracelets. And that money goes right to them. Absolutely. So that's, that's their income is what they sell. And Absolutely. they're selling a lot of different events I've been to and, and have bought some things. And I mentioned to you earlier about the one Marilyn Monroe picture. Oh, you still talk about that with the, uh, with the, with the pins. 40,000 yeah. push pins that, that make a picture of Marilyn Monroe. It's really cool. Yeah, we've done um, John Lennon. Uh, I've got a really cool R2-D2 on my, um, my oh, office the wall. Uh, it wasn't push pins. That one was paint. But okay. That same pointillism style. Yeah. Um, yeah, Julie does a great job with the pop-ups. We, we love to set up at, you know, anywhere we can, in, in office buildings, uh, at golf farmer's outings. market, golf outings. Yeah, we, we'll show up anywhere. Um Michelle, our art instructor, has been amazing at kind of, again, just fostering connection. Um, You talk about those ladies. Uh, We worked with a really cool person that was providing us with squirrel feeders. Um, Hmm. We, uh, Doug Jones, uh, he's an actor. Uh, He reached out to us just because of some of the art that we did um, for a movie that he was in, Uh, just related to it. He thought it was really cool and reached out to us on, on social media. So... Uh, she has done a fantastic job. Yeah, I've bought a number of things from earrings for my niece to um, pot holders for Christmas. I've bought a lot of you know gifts for Christmas, but yeah, Julie in the in the pop ups, she does a fantastic job with that. And just the story with being able to buy a piece of art and then know the money's going back to know the, the money's artist. going back to the artist. But then you actually get a little bio on who that artist is, and it's 
you know, it becomes a little more of a personal piece. Those cards are fantastic. So anybody that's in the artisan corner that's, per, you know, producing stuff for artisan corner, they, they get a business card. It's got their picture on it, a little story about them. Um, so I, I think it's nice because it personalizes each piece. And I'll also say that we've had clients get private gigs from those business cards. Uh, we've got a fantastic talent who, uh, was doing live art. So like going to the mall and, and painting big portraits or landscapes mm. like live in, in real time. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, you know, we've done coloring books on Amazon and, you know, uh, organizations have put in orders. We'd like, you know, seven or eight paintings and we, we work with folks. With That's stories. where social media will really help out. Right. Absolutely. They um, advertise that. We also do uh, Artisan Corner on Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it's really, it's a labor of love um, and it's production art. Um, so we're not trying to create fine art, though I, I, again, with Star Wars, I have a really beautiful starry night that has like X-Wings and TIE Fighters flying oh, in the cool. sky. Uh, we've got a guy that loves Star Wars. Um, it's, it's living in my office right now. I will say it's for sale online. So if you want to buy it, I won't feel too bad about it, but it, it's living in my office right now. Um, but it, it's production art. So it's hopefully something that people with varying levels of artistic skill can still engage in and make money from. Um, we also can break it down into steps. So you can have a person um, that's capable of doing a background. They can start there. And then someone who's capable of doing the outline can do the outline. And then someone who's capable of painting it in can do that. And it was a someone, collaboration. Yeah. Exactly. So instead of one person who's really successful making a bunch of money, you can have a number of people working together. Collaborating together. Exactly. So that's what, when we were talking about taking a tour and how neat that is. When you go into the warehouse side of it and you see people putting widgets together, right? Mm -hmm. um, then there's a whole another area and that's the art room. And that's where they're creating these pieces of art. Yep. So what if you have someone that comes in that has no artistic ability but wants to learn? Do you teach them a certain skill, like maybe it's the outline, or you, you, you start to give them and teach them so, how, to become, how to become that creative? Yeah, that's, that's skill building. Um, and, and some of those are hard skills. Um, I'm really focused on soft skills. So communication, following directions, you know, just being pleasant. Uh, so... We can do skill building through anything. I can take you to the store or to a movie and we can work on your communication, how you're dealing with staff there, uh, dealing with money. Like we can, we can work on all those different things. In the art room, they're doing the exact same thing. Following directions, sharing materials, um, you know, trying to reach a goal collaboratively. Uh, so the first half of the day uh, is also provided online through Zoom and it's just skill building. So they're working on artistic skills. So sometimes it's following along with like a project, trying to make something together. Sometimes it's working on line work or shading or coloring. Um, and so, like I said, Michelle has done a really fantastic job of creating a rolling program that if you've been there for four years or this is your first time, you're going to be able to participate and do something. And she's That's dynamic neat. and she's really does a nice job with the students. I've, I've seen her in action and She's pointing out to people where to go, what to do, and she's like a, a traffic cop. Absolutely. Um, I, I've worked in a lot of different places that have provided a lot of different services to people, and I can honestly say from the front of the office, you know, to the people working production, um, there is such a, uh, a sense and understanding of what the mission is like what we're really all there for like yeah we're trying to put out so many parts so that we can meet our contract like absolutely that's what we're trying to do yes we want to make sure that we have stuff on the shelves by october so that we can sell it for christmas like yes that of course but we want to make sure everyone's okay we want to make sure everyone is fulfilled and feel satisfied with the services they're receiving and the job that they have that they're learning something and gaining something um, buy-in for us is really important. If you don't want to be there, you don't have to be there. It's not like my other jobs where this was court mandated. I have to be here. You know what I mean? Um, this is something that fulfills a lot of people. How many folks do you have 
actively right now working there for you guys? So um, I think the art program, including online, is somewhere around 40. I think uh, production floor is another yeah, see, there's 100 nine, or so. Nine different entities. That, yeah. you know, oh, is there that many? Between the housing and, and, and the um, work skills. The We have a staffing department that's providing staffing services to organizations, you know, right. no matter who they are. Um, yeah, there's always, there's always somebody new. Um, we were providing an academy. Um, so we, I think it, the number got to 500. We, we wow. provided, um, diplomas to 500 students. Um, and you, that you're not doing that part of it anymore. So we're a nonprofit, right? Um, we compete in a very defined space. And what that is, is we identify needs in a community. COVID drastically reduced the needs for an online academy in this area, you know? Um, so we, we're not going to be able to compete with for-profit, you know? We're all going after the same money, and they can provide a lot more money than we can. Um, so we are in the process of kind of pulling that apart. Um, you know, the, the folks that haven't graduated yet, we were able to connect them with other services, uh, Porsche, um, and Candace, who are, who are really the heart and soul behind the program, they're still with us kind of. That's the Epsilani school, right? Yep, taking yeah. things apart. So um, it was something we were really proud to be a part of. And it's not, we don't think that it failed, anything like that. Um, it, it, it just didn't have a place anymore. So we're, we're kind of focusing on our, our energies in other areas. Gotcha. Joe, how long have you been working um, directly with, uh, with Tina and, and everyone over at WorkSkills? Since 2019. Okay. So been to all the golf outings, been to a bunch of open houses, so for your 50-year anniversary, you guys did a nice job hosting that. Um, and I've had a couple of my clients that I've taken on tours there and, and asked, you know, to have somebody take us on that tour. And every to the man, they walk out saying, like, wow, we had no idea what this company did or, or who they are and what their mission was. And you walk out of it knowing that these people are doing good every single day and everybody feels I think the employees feel good about what they do um, for, for, for the, the kids and the adults. I, I can definitely attest to that. Um, you know, we haven't even talked to, we have an ABA, Applied Behavioral Analysis. Um, so that's working with kids. We have speech and language pathology now. As I say, there's nine different, you know, yeah, we haven't, we couldn't cover all of them today. No, um, but it is funny. We're, we're right off Rickett, back on Summit um, in Brighton. We're surrounded by production facilities you know there's big rigs on the road out there and i'm i'm standing on the side of the road with about 40 or 50 folks waiting for the bus at the end of the day and so sometimes we do get looks and and you know i don't think that people expect to see us right there um but we are a production company we are we're just we're taking competitive contracts um so we're in the game we're just providing that service a little more gently i think good yeah, Go ahead. I think Magna is one of your big, if I, I don't want to name drop, but yeah, I think. Magna Flux, Eber, um, Unistrut, um, TG so, Fluids. Is so those are big, big companies. Mentioned yeah. Volkswagen, right? Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've done stuff for GM and all sorts That's of stuff. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, I'm really proud of our production staff. Um, it's funny when you see a bunch of people from the front office all sitting in the production area doing a job that you don't recognize because they're trying to do a time study to say, because I mean, we're, we're fair. We're looking at what, what is an average person, not even someone in production, how fast are they going to be able to do something? You sure. know, um, It's all data points. We're, we're just trying to collect enough to make an assessment to say, how can we help you? You know, Where are your needs? How to price it out. Too, right? Yeah, I mean... We, I don't think we're making a ton of money on our, our contracts. I think that's more a means to an end, you know. But that's, you're fulfilling these folks, giving them jobs, giving them purpose day in and day out. Absolutely. You know, water cooler talk, hanging out by the vending machine. You know, they have that. They've got lunch break friends and, and romances blossom and, and all sorts that's of great. things, just like everybody else at work. And so um, people... There is always some concern that, you know, we're always lo losing funding, you know, state funding. We're, you know, we're constantly doing fundraising. Um, costs are always going up. And there are 
folks that get the same sort of validation and good feelings that you and I get from doing our jobs. You know, they, they get those same feelings. And I always worry that something's going to happen, that they're not going to be able to receive those services, you know? So um, it, it's really incredible to see folks grow and take ownership of the work that they're doing and proudly show off what they did and show you your check at the end of the week. And they're like, Oh, did you see this? You know, they're, they're so excited. They talk about the games they're going to go play or buy or things that they're going to go do just, just like you or I, right. you know, very rewarding. It's gotta be for you guys. It is. Um, and Tina, we got, can't go a segment without mentioning Tina. I think she's a great leader and I think she has that passion in her heart that, um, I think it, it goes downstream to everybody, all the employees. Yeah. Um, Tina, Anita, Julie, I mean, Lori and Amy, and I, I could name a thousand names, Howard and Ruth, and, and there's all these people um, who <clears throat> have really made it their mission. I, I not intentionally job hopped, but I, I've been in like a couple different places, seen, you know, there. there's a couple people that are new and everyone else is 15, 25, 35 years, you know. Tina, Lori, you know, Rick. Julie. Yep. Yeah, Julie. Yeah. Everybody. Mentioned Michelle, right? Yeah, um, Michelle, I think, is 15 years, yeah. you know. Um, that says something right there. Yeah, even, you know, Jenny in the front office, seven years, right? No one's flitting in and out unless it's something real big. And that's, and the nature of our work is pretty transitory. People get new degrees, do new training, you know. Um, but man, people really, they really stick around. For the people, I think, for the mission. And things are changing, right? Like it, you, you came in thinking it was going to be part-time or, or short-lived and you've been here for how many years and then and you're wearing now a lot of different hats. Sure. Um, we're also working. Uh, so we, like I said, we started with a, a collaborative uh, in Brighton that during COVID uh, that was looking at how they could improve and, and kind of forecast what their needs were going to be. Um, they realized that they were very short on production line maintenance uh, and so we were working with this program called Talent Pipeline Management, which I think is a, a fantastic way to do things. Um, it's identifying people worth investing in on your ground floor and, and bringing them up, right? So if someone has management experience or supervisory experience, that's like 30% of what you want from an employee. The other 70% is knowing what the mission is, knowing what you're doing, you know, strategic goals and, and just the right attitude. So if you can identify that person on the front line then turn that person into your frontline supervisor and then find your best frontline supervisor and turn that person into a manager. Um, so we started with uh, a VR headset and online classes and uh, it slowly transitioned just from the feedback they gave us into leadership training because that was, that was the thing that was most one-to-one -one for everybody. It's remarkable what you guys do. So if people want to learn more, donate, help out, volunteer. Um, how can they find you guys online? Please jump on. It's uh, wskills.com. Uh, you can always reach me at toddm at wskills.com. Um, we're on Facebook. You can search for work skills or Artisan Corner. Um, so Artisan then, Corner, do they have their own Facebook page, I would imagine? They do. And the stuff, uh, like all the art pieces are up for sale? There's an Etsy store. You can come okay. in. We've got... Including uh, your Starry Night, Star Wars. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have to talk about that that much. <laughs> um, but yep, that's on there too. Uh, also to jewelry. Um, if you haven't tried putting essential oils on those those berry beads, yeah, uh, because of their pitted surface, they hold essential oil really nice, oh, and really? so they they keep a scent for a while. Um, you didn't know that, did no, you? No, I didn't. We do uh, sublimation, so we're taking people's paintings and and putting them on products, cutting boards and and mugs, <gasps> things yeah, like that's that. That's right. Um, I should have brought in, I've got cool tumblers, you know, that I've gotten from work. My my kids' favorite mugs are all from the artisan corner. Um, yeah, there's there's so much to, to check out. So please, you know, hop online if you can, visit us. Um, and the front door, you know, 9 to 4.30 or whatever is always open. If you just want to come in and, and peruse, someone will give you a tour. Which Joe and I both highly recommend. You'll be blown away because most people, like I say, work skills, they think, oh, you know, what is work skills? Well, it's working with developmentally challenged and, and there's more. There, like I say, I looked up online and there's nine different organizations and they're all a little different. 
but they all have a common goal of, of, of helping and making people better and more productive members of society. Yeah. And it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's the goal. You know, um, we've got folks that have, you know, just disabilities, you know, things that they've lived with their entire lives. Uh, we've got a lot of folks that have traumatic brain injuries. Um, we have folks that are trying to like reintegrate into society after some sort of incarceration. Um, and again, we've just got folks that have been out of the game for a minute. Uh, so it, it's a really, it's a pretty vast, it really range. is. Um, you know, we, you know, staffing is working with anybody and everybody looking for a job. Um, we, uh, on our side, working with a job mentor, they were called job coaches at the time. Uh, we had a gentleman who was an MD. Uh, he had gone through his surgical rotation. He was becoming a surgeon and then he had a stroke. And so he was unable to do the job that he had spent so much in oh training and so much time to do. Um, he couldn't really even go back as a general practitioner because of his level of fatigue. Um, those are eight, 10, 12, 14 hour days. Uh, so we were able to find him a job uh, working for a regulatory commission for the disposal of medication. So he would go to personal care homes and uh, different like small med facilities and just make sure they were disposing of medication correctly. And so he could go do a four hour tour. He did most of the work at home, phone calls, reports, things like that. And, and he was still making six figures. It, it utilized his education. Awesome. Um, so we were, we want to help anybody. And whatever barrier you have, you know, I think we can overcome it, you know, together. So that's, that's great. wonderful. You're such a huge asset to, to this community. We try so, to be. Yeah. And we're very proud partners and well, the community has been very good to us. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think it's Brighton is a fantastic place to be in. Um, super involved folks. Uh, plenty of people show us love that, you know, why? And then you're like, well, because Tina's been bothering them for years, or, you know, because Julie, you know, can't stay well, out of you, their you, you do a tour and you, you get why. Yeah. It's, it's easy. You, you get hooked in. Yeah. yeah. Really it's easy. easy. So, well, Todd, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. This has been, uh, been a lot of fun. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. All right.